one of my reaction was simply committing to his love A gift from above and his passion is severed every chain of the enemy I'm a better me, ready for incredible the same I can never be yes. So we'll give you the information and then you do the executive thing and make a smart choice at the end of the day, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is stay away from the guys that you don't like. If you don't like them, then it's not going to be fun and you're not going to put them in the lineup when you need to. The person we want to talk about today is Todd Gurley. Obviously, Todd Gurley had a GOAT season last year. He was a beast on the ground, any year, whatever you can ask for. Now, we understand his injuries. We knew them in the offseason way before uh, the preseason started. We saw through the drafts that the Rams were also concerned about it. And then finally, Sean McVay came out and said they're going to put Todd Gurley on a pitch count. Pitch count basically means he's going to have limited stats. Now, if you like Todd Gurley, we need to give you some information so that you can, you know, either feel good about the pick or back away from it. Todd Gurley last year had 89% snap share that was ranked number one amongst running backs. Now, the production level was insane. 21 touchdowns in total, 17 on the ground, uh, 1,251 yards on the ground, 256 carries, which ranked one, uh, 4.9 yards per carry, which was in the top 10, 73 red zone targets, that ranked number one. That means 29% of his carries were in the red zone, which is ridiculous. He had 59 receptions, and he saw an average of 6.7 defenders in the box, which ranked 44. That's a good thing. Because you don't want eight defenders in the box every time. So Todd Gurley had an amazing year. Now this year we know he's going to be on a pitch count. So we just did some simple math. Last year he was at 89% snap share. So what we said was, okay, Sean McVay, let's reduce Todd Gurley's snap share down to 70%. Let's assume that they reduce it down from 89 to 70%. So that's a 19% difference. What that means is we can project what his year might look like and what we'll do is round down just in case his you know athletic ability has has regressed so if you bring him down to 70 percent snap share and you bring his athleticism down a notch then what we're looking at is rather than 4.9 yards per carry it's four yards per carry at 200 carries that's rounded down and 58 red zone touches so what that gives you at the end of the day, if that's true, he finishes on the ground with 800 yards, about 470 yards in the air, with a total yards of 1,270 yards from scrimmage. And if you reduce his athleticism and target share 19%, then we're looking at 17 total touchdowns because of the red zone opportunities. That will still finish his top 10 um, as far as red zone opportunities. However, from a fantasy perspective, you're looking at a total of 230 fantasy points in the standard league. And, you know, roughly that comes out to about 13 fantasy points per game. So that's the information. If you believe the numbers, if you believe objectivity, then take that information and do what you will. But keep in mind, if you're drafting him in the first or second round for 13 fantasy points per game, you need to compare that with the upside of the other guys that are still on the board. If he falls to the fourth round, you hit the cop button, right? That's that's a no-brainer. 13 fantasy points per game with an upside of potentially 20, um, assuming that he gets more snap share and keeps the same athleticism he had last year. However, anything before the fourth round, you know, this cautious. You got to be cautious about that. And you need to feel good about the numbers. No more sleep, fantasy football executive pick list. Get it, I got it. Oh.